Welcome to this video tutorial to show you how to use the PASCO wireless spectrometer with a fiber optic probe. This is the spectrometer. It has an opening for a cuvette or for the fiber optic probe. And you'll notice that there are three LEDs on the front face. In order to turn it on, you press and hold the power button until you see the LEDs start to illuminate. So now the spectrometer is on and if you are going to be using it with a computer, you will connect it to your computer using a USB cable. So you'll plug it in there, and you'll also plug it in to your computer, and your computer will automatically install the device software. Here is your fiber optic probe. This is the end of the probe that goes into the spectrometer opening. And you'll see that there are arrows on the um, probe, and the arrows have to point towards the rainbow on the spectrometer face to be oriented in the correct direction. And the reason why the orientation matters is that on this face, there is a window, and so the light's going to come in through that window. And you want to make sure that you don't touch that window with your fingers. So when you're ready to insert the probe, just grab it by the top and insert it firmly into your PASCO spectrometer. So after your spectrometer is plugged into your computer or attached to your iPad, you will launch the spectrometry software. And um, because we're going to be analyzing light, you want to make sure this yellow button that says Analyze Light is illuminated. And we will then use the other, take the other end of the probe and point it at a light source. So we have here a regular old style incandescent light bulb that we used to have in our homes, the very energy intensive light bulbs. And you can see we have um, the top end of the fiber optic probe in a clamp pointing at the light bulb. And when we're ready to record data, we press in the bottom left hand corner the play button. And so this is analyzing light. And you have a choice to either set the integration time manually, and you see the higher the integration time, the more light it lets in. It's almost like the shutter speed on a camera. But in general, you will press this button auto set, and you'll see it's going to determine the best integration time for our given light source. So there is the spectrum. After you finish taking the spectrum, you just press stop, and your data is automatically saved. It's called source one right now. But if we click on that and click the pen, we have the option to rewrite, and we'll call that in can incandescent for an incandescent light bulb. So now we've switched light bulbs. We've changed over to a compact fluorescent light bulb, the newer style light bulbs that are in homes. And we want to look at what its spectrum looks like. So again, you just press the play button in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. And the integration time is too high, so we're going to auto set the integration time. And there you see the spectrum for the compact fluorescent bulb. Once you're happy with it, you press stop. And again, so we can identify, we will overwrite and we'll just put in CFL for compact fluorescent light bulb. Now, with our um, software, we can take a look at our two different spectrums and compare them. So the first thing we can do, let's switch back to the incandescent. Down on the bottom left, there's an auto scale button. So if you press that, it scales it so that your spectrum takes up the maximum portion of the screen possible. Um, and this button over here turns on and off the rainbow, depending on if you like it. But this button overlays the two spectrum. So now you can see the difference between the old style incandescent light bulbs, which you have pretty much a continuous spectrum from that, versus the compact fluorescent light, which only has emissions at very specific wavelengths. And this explains why quite a few people really prefer um, natural light or the old style light bulbs to the newer compact fluorescent light bulbs. This button down here allows us to add coordinates. So
So we can add that coordinate and it lets us see exactly what the wavelength and the intensity is of our peak. So you can see this peak has an intensity of 66.11 at a wavelength of 544.02 nanometers. And you can nudge that back and forth so that you can find the maximum peak, part of the peak. And also you can add another one if we wanted to look at, look at that peak. So you can add as many of these as you would like. And you can also delete them if you want to remove them. So finally, if we want to sh save this data, you can press the camera button up here to take a snapshot. And there's a snapshot of the spectrum that we took from the incandescent and the compact fluorescent light. And this button down here allows you to export your snapshot. So we can export it, we can save it as light, and just hit save. And then you'll have access to it.